For this problem, we see that the dimensions of your living room are 13 feet by 18 feet. Carpet is sold in square yards. How many square yards of carpet do you need to buy? There are multiple ways that we can go about solving this problem. Uh, if we go up and we look at our conversion chart above, up here, let's see. There we go. There it is. If we go and look at our conversion chart here, notice that we have lengths and we can see that there are three feet in a yard. However, what we don't see anywhere here are square feet and square yards, which are a measure of area. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about ways that we could approach a problem like this if you have um, units that are squared or cubed or, or any other type of exponent involved um, in terms of what our unit is. One method that we could use to solve this particular problem is to go ahead and change each of the feet into yards, and then we could do the number of yards times the number of yards and get an answer that's in square yards. Let's go through and do that first. If we start out with 13 feet, we can use the dimensional analysis process to say change our feet into yards. And we knew that there were um, three feet in one yard, so here we can do 13 divided by 3, and that's going to be like 4.33 yards when our feet cancel out. Then we can do the same thing for the 18 feet. We know that there's 3 feet in 1 yard. The feet will have to go on the bottom to cancel out. And then I'm left with 18 divided by 3, which is 6 yards. And then I can find the area of my carpet by doing 4.33 yards times 6 yards, length times width. And I can come up with my final solution. Um, I'll grab the calculator here real quick. 4.33 times 6 gives me 25.98. and that will be in square yards. And sometimes you'll see it written like this, sometimes you'll see it written out as square yards like it is in the problem. Um, any of those things is fine. So this is one solution method that we can use because we did know that there were three feet in a yard and we could use that particular conversion factor. Uh, another way that we can do this problem is uh, to go ahead and figure out how many square feet there are. So right now, if we know that our living room is 13 feet by 18 feet. We can multiply that together, 13 times 18, let's see what that is. 13 times 18 gives me 234. And then feet times feet gives me square feet. Notice this is kind of cool, they're both on top if you want to think of it that way. The units don't cancel out. Feet times feet gives me square feet, just like yards times yards gives me square yards. So that's kind of neat in and of itself. Now, if I have that 234 square feet and I want to change it into yards, I did not have um, square feet and square yards on my conversion table. If I want to put feet on the bottom and there's three feet in one yard, Notice that all that happens, because feet squared means feet times feet, this feet on the bottom cancels with only one of those feet on the top. And so right now what I have is still one foot left here that didn't cancel and a yard. So I have feet times yards, and what I'd like to have eventually is square yards, right? That's what we're trying to get to. So what I'd have to do here is I need to do one conversion factor to get rid of the feet, and then I need another conversion factor to get to the other to get rid of the other feet um, and switch to yards. So again I end up with three feet and one yard and now the other feet will cancel out so I'll be left just with yards times yards which gives me square yards which is what I want when I'm looking for an area. And then I can actually get my answer by multiplying all the way across the top which is 234 and dividing it by 3 times 3 which is 9 And 234 divided by 9 is 26. 
Notice here I got 25.98 and here I got 26 and the reason for that discrepancy is that up here in this part of the problem, notice we got 4.33, I rounded that to two digits. Uh, so I lost a level of precision here. Um, 26 square yards is actually the, the very best answer and notice it's kind of within rounding values right there. So this is another um, another example of a way that we could solve this problem. Just remember, if all you have is a conversion of non-squared units, that you need to do two of those. The last thing that you can do is actually build out what a new conversion. So for example, here we knew that there were three feet equal to one yard. And keep in mind from solving and working with equations, um, anything you do to one side of the equation, you can keep balance by doing the same thing to the other side. So if you need to change to square units, for example here, I can square both of these. So uh, if I have three feet squared, I square the three and I square the feet, so I get nine square feet. And here I can do the square the one, which is one times one, which is one. So when I go to, to work with square yards, I know that there's nine square feet and one square yard. And then you can do that uh, conversion directly. So here you could do 234 square feet. And now that I know that since there were three feet in a yard, there's nine square feet in one square yard. And I end up with that 26 yards squared again for how much carpet I need to buy. So uh, several different ways that you can think about it, but notice in all of these we end up really doing double duty with all of these conversion factors to get those square units instead of just the feet and yard units that were given to us in the conversion table in the first place. So just something to be a little extra cautious of when you see those square units. The same thing would be true.